Welcome back everyone. We are now live with our third and final stream from the official virtual Right for the Living closing ceremony. Today, JCC Krakow Executive Director Jonathan Ornstein is riding from Auschwitz-Birkenau to JCC Krakow in honor of Holocaust survivors, Holocaust victims and all virtual Right for the Living participants who couldn't be with us this year. As we wait for Jonathan to arrive at JCC Krakow, we would like to speak to a few of our participants, supporters and friends who have made virtual Right for the Living possible. I am honored uh, to speak to Melinda Goldrich and Mark Bennett. Melinda resides in Aspen, Colorado and is the president of the Goldrich Family Foundation, focusing on Jewish and Holocaust education. She serves on the boards of the Aspen Jewish Community Center, the Shoah Foundation, and the Los Angeles Museum of Holocaust. She's very active in supporting Jewish initiatives worldwide. Her dedication is to continue the legacy created by her late father, Jonah Goldrich, a Holocaust survivor from Poland, who had a strong commitment to the continuity of Israel and the Jewish diaspora. His testimony is archived as the, at the Shoah Foundation. She participated in Right for the Living 2019, and thanks to her foundation, there is a full feature documentary in the making about Right for the Living, directed by Mark Bennett. Mark Bennett is an artist and the director of feature films, documentaries, music videos, and national commercials. His recent work includes the animated short film, The Tattooed Torah, based on a re renowned children's <laughs> book. His work has been shown at exhibitions uh, throughout the United States and is a part of many private collections. Melinda, Mark, I am very honored to have you here today with us on this very special day. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thank Hi. Um, so I think my first question goes to Melinda. Um, your father, Jonah Goldrich, was a Holocaust survivor who came to the U.S., became very successful, and focused a lot, a lot of his work on Holocaust education. Why is it important for you to continue his legacy? As the last survivors are around today, it's becoming even more important to share their stories and share the legacy of those families who were lost and the families who still have survivors amongst, amongst them and remind the world that this happened and that it should never happen again. And especially during these times where there's so much hatred in the world and racial injustice and a lot of things that cycle back to the, the Holocaust principles, it's even more important to, to share the history and to make sure that everyone in today's world is aware of what happened in, in, moder in relatively modern times. That's very true, and through your work, you're doing all of that and more. And I hope that through the Right for the Living movie, we'll also be able to spread the same message <coughs> and to keep the next generations aware. Um, and Mark, you working on the Right for the Living movie, I know that seeing the first promo video of the Right, the short promo video with it, I know that you were surprised mm -hmm. that Right Like This exists. Have you ever thought what it could be when you came to Poland to direct the documentary? Well, it's interesting. I, <clears throat> when I first heard about the ride from Melinda, I thought it was a fantastic idea and what an amazing way to um, <clears throat> expose people to the Shoah and try to make some sense out of it 75 years later in a way that's uplifting and, and motivational and uh, in a way can give us hope for the future because to see you know, the metaphor of leaving death to life and all that the JCC is doing and represents and the resurgence of Jewish life in Krakow. I, um, you know, as I learned more and more about the ride, I thought that it's such an amazing event and so important. And the fact that a survivor like Marcel or Bernard are a part of it. And uh, the fact that a young man like Robert Desmond was part of making this happen and has forged this amazing relationship with Marcel, which in and of itself is such an amazing story and something that gives us hope for the future. So uh, at first I, I thought it was a brilliant idea, but the more I learned about it and the more Melinda and I talked about it and we talked about doing the movie, 
I realized that this was a really Im an important and, a, in, and very um, uh, an event that had the potential to reach many, many people with a sense of hope, but also with education. You know about one of the most horrific uh, moments in human history. Well, thank you, Mark, for putting it this way. And we know that with you being the director, the documentary is in a safe and very great hands, and we can't wait to see what comes out of it. <laughs> and um, actually, I think it's really interesting that you're using the right to tell this kind of greater story um, of issues like anti-Semitism, uh, tolerance, injustice, empathy. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on the background of the Right for the Living movie and what, uh, what purpose it's going to serve? Um, I am the, the producer of the movie, Mark is the director, and the movie came from an idea to just film the story of Marcel and his involvement with the Ride for the Living and create a backstory about how he came to be involved with it and how he came to do it every year. And then once we decided to make that movie, um, a full length documentary, it evolved into something completely larger and greater that is about the ride, all the participants of the ride and why they do it, Marcel's story, Bernard's story as well, and then how it ties to the Jewish community of Krakow and the Jewish Community Center of Krakow and brings such a different turn of events to a place that was all death and destruction 75 years ago. And then it expands even beyond that to the resurgence of Judaism in other parts of Europe and then cycles all the way back to how those lessons can be applied today. And today, a year ago when we started making the film and today, you know, 2020 is even another version of today where we have a lot of other issues mm. um, going on, which is why the for one thing, the ride isn't live and happening this, this summer in Krakow. And so we have like, it keeps building into a bigger and greater story. And um, it could probably be a 10 hour documentary, but Mark is gonna keep it to um, a normal documentary length because we want it to be watchable. But at the same time, there's just so much content that um, Mark has covered in interviews and ride, and the ride last year. And we just keep building on the storyline and it becomes more and more relevant the longer we work on it. And I think it's, it's also interesting and Melinda and I have had this conversation greatly and I am, it's, we're, we're very fortunate to have an executive producer like Melinda and Jonathan that see the uh, importance of the bigger story and also support it because this originally was gonna be a quick little movie with one or two cameramen about the ride and the resurgence of Jewish life in Krakow and the importance and role of the JCC in that resurgence. But when we got there and we started to get into the story and learned about Robert and Marcel and all the history of how the JCC was founded and met Bernard and started talking to all the people and then to going over the route of the ride, you know, it became from one or two cameramen to a crew of 25 people. So, um, you know, and also as we started exploring this amazing story, we also realized that the bigger part of the story is now 75 years later, genocide is not the exception, but it actually is the norm. And that is a very disturbing uh, fact. So to, to look at the reasons why we still have genocide 75 years later <clears throat> and how the Shoah <clears throat> was part of that and how we could learn from it as well as all these genocides. We really need to look at them all together and um, <clears throat> to really give ourselves a toolbox to how to move forward and try to avoid these things from happening. And also all the people that have gravitated towards being in the movie has made it even more important and more relevant. You know, like people like Stephen Smith from the USC Shoah Foundation, Ben Ferenz, the last living uh, prosecutor from Nuremberg, who at 100 years old is still fighting genocide around the world and with a lot of spunk at 100 years old, at standing at about five feet tall. 
and people like the head of the ADL in New York, Jonathan Orns, uh, uh, Greenblatt, sorry. So we uh, are getting interviews from a lot of amazing people to talk about this um, and uh, with the hope of educating people, but also, um, you know, putting it all in perspective so that we can, in some way, shape or form, try to move forward in a positive direction. So we're, we remain very excited about it. We're, um, we're sorry that, you know, Marcel wasn't able to come back to Poland and do the ride for real now that he's healthy and strong. And uh, we, we all send a hello to Marcel and Robert and Bernard and all the other people that are participating in this year's virtual ride. Um, the film is progressing and, uh, you know, our last few interviews have been kind of on hold right now because of the pandemic, but uh, we're making tremendous strides with all the editing and the story is really coming together. And as filmmakers, it's exciting to see that everything is starting to gel together as well as the incorporating of current events and uh, where we are as a, as a country now and as a world now and the things that we're uh, you know, challenged with is I think it's just making this film even more relevant. So we're, we remain really excited about it. And I feel really privileged to work with people like Jonathan, Melinda, and everybody else that's involved with the production. Well, I think you've both put it very beautifully. And uh, I think on one hand, uh, the right for the living is something very specific. But as you mentioned, it builds upon all these universal ideas. And I think that's why it's so uh, powerful to have this movie and to have this right for the living continued in the virtual form. So I, we're very, all very excited to see the movie. And I wanted to thank you very much for joining us today to speak a little about it. And I hope we'll be able to meet soon and watch the movie together. We look forward to sharing the movie with everyone in Krakow. And congratulations to Jonathan for achieving the ride on his own today. And um, sorry we couldn't be there. And we hope yeah. to see everybody in Krak next year in Krakow. Krakow. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully next year in Krakow. Uh, so, uh, as we wait for our next speaker, we wanted to share with you some materials from the ride. Oh, wow. <coughs> Today. For so long, for so many people, that was the end of the story of Jewish life in Poland. And you, by being here, are making a statement and changing history. Because we are able to do something that those 75 years ago weren't able to do, which is to leave Auschwitz-Birkenau as free, proud Jews. together from literally the four corners of the earth when we could do that then we make the impossible happen when i first heard about the events i thought it actually was a little strange a bike ride from this place of horrible sadness and death uh, but then i learned more about it and i think it's an excellent way to raise awareness about the horrors that happened at Auschwitz, and also to feel the hope that comes out of Krakow. Riding away from it, you're riding towards life. I'm the child of Holocaust survivors, and it's a, a very personal thing for me that I'm coming here not to deal with tragedy. We came as a family of six. Uh, it was our 30th wedding anniversary. My husband and I decided together that this is something we wanted to give our children because we wanted to have this experience together. It was unbelievable for me to ride side by side with a superstar cyclist, Greg Lamont, through the France champion. The glitter in your eyes and the, the enthusiasm in your voice to be a part of a community. I would encourage everyone I know 
to participate in Ride for the Living. It's a, a unique experience um, that has taught us so much about the rebirth of Jewish life in Krakow. Coming in with Marcel, 73 years afterwards, and I'm thinking about him as a 10-year-old kid, um, to be able to finish here 73 years later in this environment where it's, it's happiness and joy, it was really a magical ride. I really loved it. I don't know if I'll ever be an ambassador, but I will definitely be an ambassador for this ride. I think the message of the ride is from the devastating historical experience of the Holocaust to the hope of the JCC, to the Jewish Community Center that's helping Jewish life rebuild here in Poland. We never really thought that there could be life in Poland again. And when we saw the excitement of people seeing the JCC and the programs, we said we need to be a part of this. Most of us come from here, and here we can do something about it 77 years later. It's really important to honor the past and remember and reflect on the loss and the horror of what happened at Auschwitz, but it's also important to continue the journey toward life. Rain. Give me snow, I don't care. We're gonna keep coming and we're gonna keep doing it every year. The celebration of, of doing this ride is really something that you'll never forget in your life. Oh, it was really great to re relieve those moments. Um, every year we have this tradition where we create the Right for the Living short video to uh, keep those memories with us and to be able to come back to them. Um, the first video we've seen was from 2018. It was actually an anniversary year for the JCC and the ride. It was 10 years um, of JCC Krakow, five years of Right for the Living and 30 years of the Jewish Culture Festival. Um, in Krakow. So it was a big year for Jewish Poland, for Jewish Krakow. Um, and um, on the video, you've probably seen uh, Greg Lemont, a three-time Tour de France champion, who, um, who participated in Right for the Living that year and rode alongside Marcel um, to, to ride with him together to celebrate the rebirth of Jewish life and to commemorate the Holocaust. Um, so now we're very excited that it's not going to be only these short promos, but also a full Right for Living feature documentary. And um, I'm actually right now receiving news that Jonathan is on his way to the JCC, so we are going live now with his arrival at the finish line.
Ah, wow, hi, hey everybody. Just got back in to the JCC. It was a good ride, a little bit of rain, but everything felt good. I'll tell you, it was a very different experience riding by myself, but I uh, have to tell you, I felt my good friend Bernard with me and Marcel, and I felt all the riders, everybody who's done the ride with me, everybody who's doing it around the world, really felt it this year. Uh, we were disappointed that we had to go virtual, but I have to tell you that having 1,300 participants from 16 countries, five satellite events in North America, the numbers were incredible. We did 147,000 miles, cycled, run, and walked. That's going around the globe six times. We raised a lot of money, over $120,000 so far, 12,000 views of our online programming, and about 80,000 views of our uh, virtual Ride for the Living promo. So I think this is just the beginning. We uh, feel really good about this. We think that the, the virtual ride is something not only that we'll do this year, but we're gonna keep it going every year, even though next year we're gonna come back live, see everybody back in Krakow. So all of you virtual riders, make sure once Corona is finished and the world goes back to normal that you put it in your summer plans, come back, ride with us in Krakow. It's the ride of a lifetime. Next year in Krakow. Thank you. Wow, Jonathan, it was great to see you at the finish line. Uh, I think all of us were applauding as we were watching you ride uh, at, at our JCC finish line and having you ride for Marcel, for Bernard, for Holocaust survivors, for Holocaust victims, and for everyone who participated in past Ride for the Living editions and virtual Ride for the Living. It really means a lot to us. And thank you for doing that, Jonathan. And um, it was really, really a special day. Um, and I'm very happy that we still are able to talk to a few of our participants to ask them ab about how they feel seeing Jonathan cross the finish line. So um, I think first we will try to connect um, to our friend in New Jersey, Shari Gersten. Hi, Shari. Hi, Shari. Oh. Hi, so uh, we can't hear you right now, Shari. But I wanted to introduce you, um, Shari Gersten. She's the Vice President of Leadership and External Relations at uh, ADL. She's a Friends of JCC Krakow board member. And this year was actually supposed to be the first year that, uh, for her to participate in Right for the Living in Krakow. 
And when the ride turned virtual, she was sure to sign up to participate virtually. Uh, this year from New Jersey. Um, hi, Shari, can, can you hear us? Can we connect? Just a few moments to check if Shari is able to connect to us. Okay. So Shari actually represents a big contingent of Right for the Living participants who were supposed to come to Krakow this year, but unfortunately um, weren't able. Uh, but we hope to welcome all of you next year in Krakow and thank you all for joining us this year virtually. And um, now I want to share actually a story of on one of our Right for the Living participants that Jonathan writes in honor of today. Uh, Bernard Offen. Bernard Offen at the age of 10 endured the Krakow ghetto and the Nazi concentration camps of Płaszów, Julak, Maut Mauthausen, Auschwitz-Birkenau and Dachau. Out of over 50 in his family, only he and his two older brothers survived. In what Bernard would call his process of healing, he returned to Poland in 1981 to confront his demons. Not long after, he would begin his life's mission of ad advocacy by spending summers in Krakow remembering, educating, and inspiring others. Since 2018, he is a Right for the Living participant. So actually, Bernard wasn't able to call in with video today, but I will call him now live, so we uh, get a chance to hear a few words from Bernard about what he feels seeing Jonathan cross the finish line. Hi Bernard, this is Agnieszka calling from JCC Krakow. You are now live with all of our virtual participants and viewers on Facebook. Wow, thank you. So I just want to say that uh, about five minutes ago, Jonathan has crossed the finish line at the JCC. This uh, afternoon he started his bike ride in Auschwitz-Birkenau and now he arrived at the JCC. Can you tell us a little bit how do you feel watching him ride in your honor? Well, it's a great honor, of course, to uh, have uh, uh, ridden with uh, Jonathan. And uh, I thank him very much for riding on behalf of uh, all the virtual riders, who, of whom there are so many. Uh, for me, it was about uh, last time I rode with Jonathan. Uh, it was difficult for me to uh, be once again in Auschwitz, and uh, but uh, it was uh, very heart uplifting to have left Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau with so many writers who came to honor what happened in that place, the, uh, the murder of uh, so many people, including my father, and after our arrival there. So uh, it, uh, it was also and is a uh, great healing for me to to confront my my past by just returning there and uh, riding with uh, Jonathan and so many people that it is not forgotten of what transpired there and in so many other camps. Uh, my family, which consisted of uh, 59 people, they all perished, except my two older brothers, who uh, are no longer with us. So I'm the last one left of that family. And to uh, continue with uh, supporting uh, the Krakow JCC is uh, my honor and my my also my healing 
that's what I call self-confrontation in the process of healing by returning there and riding away from there. It's like uh, I regain my freedom once again to uh, uh, to carry on and bear testimony and to have so many people ride uh, with us and this year virtually of course and uh, uh, well, very yes, nice. it's really very special uh, well to first of all have you as our hero and part of our jcc and right for the living family but i think i'm speaking to all of the all of us and in, in, including jonathan including all of our virtual riders when we say that we ride we walk uh, we run uh, having in mind stories of people like you your story um, and the fact that we can call you our friend and our role model our hero it means a lot to us um, so i wanted to thank you so much bernard for participating in right for the living in krakow for joining us this year virtually and i hope that next year we will be able to welcome you back here in krakow for 2021st right for the living Thank you. May, uh, may I add one other thing? Yes, of course. I am so, so pleased and, uh, and uh, that so many young Polish people are volunteering to the JCC and uh, learning about uh, Judaism and learning about Polish Jewish history. So I, I think it'll, it is a great healing between Jews and polls of what you and others are doing and i am very very uh, very very pleased about that well, and uh, i thank also you. send greetings also send greetings from my partner christina wapczynska riba to uh, all of uh, the writers and walkers and whoever is participating in this uh, in this mitzvah well thank you bernard it was a pleasure to connect to you it makes our day even more special being able to share these few words with you so i thank you and i hope to see you soon thank in krakow thank you i look forward to being back uh, whenever this epidemic ends thank you bernard thank you. bye bye Well, um, we have just heard from Bernard, uh, one of the heroes that Jonathan writes in honor of. Um, and now we are going to connect to Vicki Haley and Amy Warner, AKA the Warner Girls. Um, I am so happy to introduce you uh, now to Vicki, Haley and Amy, uh, who participated in Write for the Living for four times. Uh, Vicki is our uh, Friends of JC Krakow board president uh, and is involved in many volunteer and philanthropic endeavors among them UJA, Park Avenue Synagogue, and uh, MS initiatives for which she, she raised millions of dollars. Um, as, bo as a board president, she's instrumental uh, in supporting JCC Krakow and ensuring that what we do here is possible. So I am very honored to speak to all of you. Um, hello, welcome. Hi. Hi, congratulations, Jonathan. That was really exciting to see. Yeah, so actually that Amazing. was my first question. What did you feel seeing Jonathan right through the gate? Uh, you know, with so many people that are not able to come to Krakow today, Jonathan was writing in honor of all of virtual par participants. How did it feel for you? It made us feel like we were there with him, but yet we missed it at the same time because it is such a special day, event, weekend, whatever you want to call it for our family. And it moves us every single year and just being part of this whole thing is just emotionally moving and we all feel so grateful to be part of this so it was a great feeling a great feeling and what actually what is the drive to keep coming back every year i don't think i just think it's something we feel like we have to do it's like it's not even something we think about it's the minute we come home from one ride, we're already looking forward to the next ride. It's not something that's, it's like brushing your teeth. You just do it. It's something that's part of you. Wow, that's great. 
And Haley and Emmy, I, actually, I think you had some story that you were learning how to ride a bike in order to do right for a living. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So it actually wasn't that I learned how to ride the bike for the ride. I didn't before that morning. Um, it was probably not the smartest decision, but I think it shows that anyone can do this ride. I showed up and that morning found my bike with my name tag and learned how to ride a bike. Um, yeah, I think it shows that you don't have to be a cyclist. You don't have to be an athlete. Being a part of this is just to be a part of the experience and anyone can do it. I am living proof of that. <laughs> and it's a great way to tell someone how I learned to ride a bike and invite them to join our community and back out all that we do. And uh, why do you think it's important that uh, people your age do the ride? That uh, it's not uh, only uh, you know, older people who do the ride, but also young people, teens and uh, young adult students? Well, we think it's important for anyone of any age to do the ride, um, but definitely, especially young people. The ride, the day of the ride, the whole weekend is such an incredible experience, whether it's raining or there's a big hill, you just feel so proud and so lucky to be part of something so important, um, especially with everything going on in the world now and the unfortunate presence of anti-Semitism. The way to combat that is really through education and through learning about the JCC Krakow and what the Jewish people have gone through. And it's just so important for young people to get educated and get involved. And this is one of the best ways to do that. I also well, feel, if I could just interject, I didn't know the questions, but they're gonna tell the story. You know, they're the ones that have to carry the story for their children and their children's children. I think also the Holocaust wasn't that long ago and people don't realize that, but at the same time, not everyone is lucky enough to meet a Bernard or a Marcel or someone who's so impactful in your life. And we all feel very lucky to have built those relationships and be a part of this community so that we can then leave Krakow, come to New York and tell our friends about it and send them the links. And I think while we would love to be in Krakow, something so great about the virtual ride is more people know about it and are participating. And that's really, really exciting for our family. Well, that's great. And you actually got uh, uh, quite a few of your friends uh, involved in the virtual ride, which is great. Uh, so thank you for that. And thank you for being uh, involved this year virtually. Um, and Vicky, I also wanted to ask, because actually you're uh, the participant that raised the most money this year for virtual ride for the living. Uh, this year, the fundraising was not uh, obligatory. It was um, anyone who would like to chip in and help the support the Jewish future in Krakow. And you really went for it. Can you tell us a little bit about what's your, uh, what's your recipe for success and why do you think it's important to do this? I think I, the girls and I are so fortunate that we have incredible friends and incredible family and they know how important the JCC of Krakow is and how important the work is. And when we ask, they just are so generous and give because they know how committed our family is. And I think they all stand behind what you all are doing in Krakow. They feel like they want to help. And I think it, it makes them feel good to help. And so I'm so proud that our team raised as much as we did, especially in these times. Um, and I think I, I couldn't, I'm just so happy to be able to help out because you still have survivors to take care of. You still have Shabbat, some sort of Shabbat dinner somehow. You still have, you know, the, the preschool open. You still have lots of expenses. You have to turn the lights on, you know? So I was very happy and proud of all my friends and so grateful, as I said, that they chose to step up this year and help support our team. Well, we are very grateful to have you as our friends, uh, as our part of our Right for the Living and JC Krakow family. It means so much to us and I'm very happy to see your faces. I hope that uh, next year we'll be able to connect in Krakow and to be together in Krakow. Uh, so I wanted to thank you so much uh, for calling in, for sharing these beautiful stories um, and thank you for everything that you've done over the years. And I just want to say that I am so immensely proud of you and Ryan and Seb and Jonathan and the entire team because each and every day, the hard work you guys put into this, it literally blew me away. And I hope I expressed that to you all and the whole team in Krakow, but 
you went above and beyond any of our wildest expectations. And I know Jonathan saw this and I thought he was crazy and you guys made it happen. So I want to say thank you to you and thank you for allowing us to be part of this. Thank you. Well, thank you. It was uh, really great to have partners like you in helping us make this virtual right for the living dream possible uh, because I know that for all of us it was very hard when we learned that possibly right for the living in Krakow won't take place because we all love the idea and we feel so connected and for us it's also a great opportunity to meet with people like you to see all these family members coming back to us uh, so to actually be able to turn this something very negative into something positive with uh, over 1300 virtual participants like you I think it uh, speaks volumes about the whole mission of the right for the living as well, which is from the darkness to the light. So I am very thankful that we were able to work together on this. And thank you so much. And next year in Krakow. Woo. Bye. Well, thank you, Vicky, uh, Haley, and Amy. It was great to hear from you. And um, now, actually, in a few moments, we will be hearing from Jonathan Ornstein, the JC Krakow Executive Director. He just took a little bit of a rest after riding all day <laughs> to Krakow. Um, and we are very happy to be able to hear a few words from him uh, for the end of this uh, live stream. And um, it, I think it was very special for all of us to watch him ride. And with his right and with the virtual right for the living, it really shows how important and how powerful the uh, right for the living idea is. That even throughout this very difficult time, uh, throughout all of this that's happening right now, we were sti still able to keep the positive idea of right for the living going, to focus on the future, to focus on life and the re rebirth. Hey everybody, 
feeling good after the, after the ride? It was as if all of you were there with me. So I want to thank everybody for doing the ride. Thank you for raising money, for getting out there, for getting in shape, for running, walking, and cycling those miles, and joining us in this mission that we have to show the world that Jewish life did not end in Poland with the Holocaust. I just want to thank everybody who was with us today. I want to take a, a moment to apologize to my very, 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 very close friend, Shari Gersten. There was a technical problem that we, uh, that we had, so we couldn't, we couldn't hear from Shari, which uh, is a shame. But I'm sorry, Shari, and, uh, and you're amazing, and we love you. And uh, I'm sorry that that, that didn't work out. Um, but thanks, thanks again to everybody. And as I said earlier, this is not the end of something. This is the beginning. And we'll see everybody next year in Krakow. Stay safe, be well, and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Next year in Krakow. <laughs>